What if I told you that there was something similar to the savory and crunchy taste of bacon, but wasn't exactly that the bacon that you buy at Target, Walmart, or Trader Joe's? Ever tried vegan bacon? Or chicken and duck made without the actual killing of the animals? This concept of meat that is produced without killing chickens, pigs, cows, you name it, might be hard and shocking to grasp. But to say the least, you don't need to consume animal products ever. Before I start going into the conditions animals are undergoing at the slaughterhouse, my name is Inhim Choi and I'm an animal rights activist. I had done another TED talk regarding animal rights at my high school, trying to show how we humans are destroying animals' habitats, causing them to become stray or to migrate. I tied that TED talk in with my dog, who is a stray animal before being adopted. Maybe now you'll see that I am very devoted and emotional about anything regarding animals, especially when they are confined in tight areas with limited movement and destined to have their bodies cut into pieces for us to eat. To me, it's a good thing that people are becoming more aware of the misery these farmed animals endure and of the environmental impacts livestock has on the planet. A growing number of consumers are now questioning where their food comes from. This is a positive progression away from industrialized food production, so there's a hopeful side to this new industry reaction. However, there's a dark side as well, and I am here today to break it to you. Now, you might think where an animal farm where they raise the animal before heading to the slaughterhouse looks something like this cartoon. You know, where all the animals are smiling and giving the perception that this animal farm is full of laughter and happiness. But to tell you the truth, it's not. Today, we treat rapists, murders, and even pedophiles better than the most innocent beings on the planet. According to PETA, or People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, they stated that on today's factory farms, animals are crammed by the thousands into filthy windowless sheds or stuffed into metal crates, wire cages, or other torturous devices. These animals will never be able to root around in the soil, build their own nests, raise their own families, or even, or even do anything that is natural or important to them. Most won't even feel the warmth of the sun on their backs or breathe fresh air until the day they are loaded onto trucks headed to the slaughterhouse. Sure, many will say that that's how meat is produced, that it was the animal's destiny to be slaughtered, or that this murderous creation of meat isn't that bad, proving that these individuals are not putting themselves into the animal's perspective. But seriously, imagine yourself in the animal's shoes for a day. Imagine going through what the animals felt and dealt with in the video. At a very young age, these animals are injected with antibiotics so they grow faster and to keep them alive in the unsanitary conditions. Most are genetically manipulated to grow bigger and to produce more eggs or milk than they naturally would. For example, some chickens grow so abnormally large that their legs cannot support their outsized bodies causing them to starve or dehydrate since they cannot walk to nearby water or food. Can you imagine being stuffed when you're already full or can you imagine being injected with toxins when you don't even want them? When we do these deeds to other humans, we call it inhumane. Then what's it called for the animals? Just everyday, routinely normal things? Now at the slaughterhouse, for those that survive the transport will often have their throats slit while they still remain conscious. They will be plunged into the scalding hot water of the defeathering or hair removal tanks or have their bodies skinned or hacked apart while they remain alive. It's like going to the dentist and getting all four of your wisdom teeth pulled without any aesthetics, but about a hundred times worse. Now for proponents of animal slaughter and production of meat, I have an example for you to consider. In my AP Language of Composition class, we were reading The Modest Proposal by Jonathan Swift, where he referred to selling and eating children to reduce the serious starvation situation in Ireland. He stated how a year-old child is the most delicious, nourishing, and wholesome food, whether stewed, 
baked, boiled, or roasted. While reading this satire piece, I came to realize what Suth was proposing was exactly what we were doing to animals, confining them, murdering them, skinning them, plunging them, cooking them in various ways. During class, I questioned why my classmates were being grossed out or saying this is horrible when we have been doing this gruesome act to animals for who knows how long. They started rebuking me, stating how humans eating other humans is cannibalism, and the difference between a human and an animal is that a human has a spirit. They were basically saying that we can disregard animals because they can't talk, can't express feelings, can't feel happiness, loneliness, or sadness, as they say, that we can disregard them and do whatever we want to them, humane or not. Perhaps that's the reason why factory farm industries strive to maximize outputs while minimizing costs, always at the animal's expense. These large corporations that run these factory farms have figured out a way to make more money by cramming as many animals as they can into tiny spaces. Scott David from The Guardian even published an article titled America's Horrifying New Plan for Animals, High-Speed Slaughterhouses, where he referred to the new swine slaughter inspection system proposed by the USDA. What it allows an increase in high-speed slaughterhouses and a decrease on trained government inspectors on the line. This basically allows for sick or injured pigs, for example, who are too weak to even stand to be slaughtered for food. We must end the commercialization of the animal's body for the health of the planet, for our health, and especially for the animal's sake. When these animals are enduring such pain, misery, and sadness, and have their lives taken at a fraction of their lifespan, doing a little better isn't going to be enough. Now, while I may have been rambling on and on to some, or preaching to others, that our plan B starts now. What I'm going to say from here on out is what each of you out in the audience can do on a personal level, or can encourage you to reignite strict eating habits. And by strict eating habits, I do not mean that you are going to get an eating disorder or you are going to have to give up meat completely and eat vegetables and greens for the rest of your life. No, in fact, I am actually trying to promote a step-by-step -step process in which you can personally reduce the misery these, arm these farmed animals are enduring. So to start off, if you really, really cannot give up meat, I advise that you buy your meat from local farmer markets or health food stores. Yes, they are still killing animals to produce meat, but they have been grown sustainably and with the freedom they deserve. Unfortunately, sustainably grown meat is more expensive than the cheap meat churned on factory farms. But compared to the factory farm meat, sustainable meat from animals raised on pasture contains less fat, fewer calories, and higher levels of omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin E, and other important nutrients. As an added benefit, these, the sustainable meat grown from these pastures are not produced with growth hormones, non-therapeutic antibiotics, or unsavory feed addictives that undermine public health. If you don't know where to start or you don't know where to find your local food source, you can search up local farmer markets near me on Safari or Google. Examples of local sources include Eat Wild, Local Harvest, Buy Better Dairy, and many more. Aside from that, what you can do individually as in your daily routine is you could spread the word, bring awareness, go to local events, go to farm investigations, have meatless Mondays, or even turn vegetarian, pescatarian, or, vegeta or vegan, sorry. You can even um, ask your local institution to sign the Center for Good Food Purchasing. You can even urge the USDA to keep and implement the new organic certification animal welfare regulations. You can even demand Congress to ban horse slaughter and pass the 2017 SAFE Act. You can even commit to the Boycott Canadian Seafood to help baby seals if you are a chef, own a restaurant, or have a business revolved around food. 
or you can even commit to the shop with your heart pledge, which implies that you buy your meat from your meat and dairy with humane certifications. The list goes on and on. There are so many ways in which you can make an impact, create change, and spark change in the production of meat. Now you might be thinking, this is so much commitment, this is so much work, or that someone else will be making a difference. But the thing is, the someone else that you are thinking of is thinking the exact same thing, that someone else will be making a difference. So what I'm trying to say here is that if you felt something watching that one minute video, or if you want to spark change in the production of meat, that it all starts from within. It all starts with yourself. So before I bring closure to this TED Talk, I hope that you have been informed and that you take action. It doesn't mean that you have to have a drastic change from a full-on carnivore to a vegan or vegetarian. Instead, take small steps, because even if it is considered small, you will eventually become vegan, vegetarian, or pescatarian. Have meatless Mondays for a month, or don't eat dinner for dinner, or don't eat meat for dinner for a week, and eventually you'll get there. And one last thing to keep in mind, the greatest threat to humans is ignorance, but the greatest threat to animals is ignorant people. Thank you.